Hello everybody. Today's video is one that I've been wanting to make for a while. I did the pre-VAP kid tips and I've done UA tips, but I've never done a pre-VAP kid UA or assessment and checkpoint tips. So today is that day. <laughs> so hopefully it can help some of you out. So it is a little bit different. Those of you who have done UAs for level two on up know that it's a little bit different there's more slides um, more levels that they go through and it asks different things so first I'm gonna just point out a little bit of the differences so in the uh, in level two and up uh, the lesson six and lesson 12 are both called assessments just one is uh, the assessment one and one is assessment two in pre VAP we have only eight lessons and so halfway is lesson four which is a checkpoint which really there's it's not too different <laughs> except for it's just less material so checkpoint is level four or is lesson four and then lesson eight is the assessment now they're very similar you do have a ua feedback form just the same way that you do in level two and above but um on here you'll notice that it's a little bit different so the ua forms that are in level two and above they are asking for them to often show um uh, show what they know and they get less points if the teacher needs to assist now this is where it's really important to pay attention to the feedback form for pre VAP because sometimes they will want them to identify and they'll get more points doing it independently especially as the levels get higher but you'll notice especially in the the lower level of level one so like China and um, those beginning countries oftentimes it'll just say repeat and that will give full points to the student so I often give the student the chance to do it independently because if they can that's fantastic and we definitely want to see if they're able to do that and I'll mention to the parents that they've done that but notice that if they do repeat oftentimes they'll get those full points so assist those students give them that chance and help them out so there is a lot more supporting because since it is the first level and such young ages, you really do need to kind of scaffold and hold and build their schema. So look for that and see where you can uh, give the points and help the students along in those UAs and assessments. Now, the things that um, we're going to look at is uh, some ways that can help. So just the same as pre VAP lessons you need to have tons of energy using props making it fun this shouldn't be drudgery even though it's called an assessment it really is still a time to interact and have a great time with the students so have energy find fun puppets all have like special puppets that I only use in UAs like this one is one of my favorites and he has his arms and he can clap for them yay yay and then he can hide and sometimes this is even um, a prop that I or a reward that I use they'll get to feed dino home I usually try to have some sort of interactive fun reward whether I'm using many cam or if I'm using this puppet they get to choose what the dinosaur eats maybe he gets to eat an egg and so there's just fun ways that's kind of I jumped into my next one but have a really fun reward if you have something that can catch their attention because it isn't provided in the other lessons they have an interactive reward but on the checkpoints and UAs you will notice that there is not a reward system so plan ahead have something fun engaging that the students will love to do make ice cream or do stickers on your face whatever it is that you really like and that your students really like that will help with the the checkpoint now the other thing to remember is the checkpoint only has four stops both the UA and the checkpoint so that's different in uh, level two and above you have five checkpoints for assessment one and six checkpoints for assessment two so in the lower level you only have those four stops so it's important to remember how to pace your time so like you can't give a star for every stop that you do um, or I guess you could and then just do one at the very end so that's one way to pace out your stars but give rewards do things throughout that help the students feel motivated and uh, things like that so when you see the stops some of the ways that I like to extend because sometimes you don't fill up the time because there isn't as many questions so at the beginning there's either you're looking for Meg or you're looking for Mike and so we'll just oh, where's Meg 
Where's Mike? And oftentimes there's like a thought bubble and it will show them in the bubble. And I often have students who are like, here, here. And they're excited to find it. Even though technically you're going through the level to find Meg or Mike, doesn't matter. Have fun with it. So we'll look for Mike. Oh, I'll have them look for Mike or Meg. <laughs> um, you can also use toilet paper tubes, whatever, use your hands, but we really make that fun and enjoyable. And of course, extend according to the student's level. If you know that this student is going to struggle going through the UA, don't do any of these extensions. <laughs> but for me, I often find that I need to fill the time. And so these are a few of those ways. Next, we count the stops. So when it shows that first counting uh, map, we'll, I'll say, how many stops? One, two. And often they'll start counting and they'll get the idea. And I'll circle as we go, one, two, three. And as we get to each stop map, we'll count. We'll do it, one, two, yay. Or we'll do one, two, three, depending on where we're at. We'll do it fast and slow, different voices, use puppets, things like that. And it makes those stops so much more fun. Remember, that it's interactive, so you've got those uh, celebration sounds. So make sure you're using those. Um, if you've got clackers, make it really exciting for the kids. Next, there's the slides of the Ready, Set, Go. And so we'll do this with different voices and things like that. So ready, set, go. And we'll do it fast and we'll stop and different things so you can kind of play with that slide as well. Next, um, the, if you do need to extend, um, you can ask different questions on the slides. You can ask about pictures. The parents don't know what is part of the assessment and what isn't. So you can extend by asking more about things that they like or about what they see on the slide. So that's another way to extend. Also, at the very end, after they finish and they've done their big celebration, there's another review slide. It goes through all the vocabulary that they've been going over. And then if that's not enough, there is one more practice slide after the goodbye slide, so the very last. So if you don't know, at the very bottom of the screen, you can choose slide numbers. And so I usually go ahead of, um, and I kind of pick out the slides, like if I want to review, if I want to go to that practice slide, then I'll jump to the very last slide. And it gives just one more thing to practice. And then you know that the goodbye slide is one more back. So that's just one way of doing that. So hopefully this gives you um, a few pointers on how to do those checkpoints and assessments. If you have any suggestions or any questions, please put it below. Good luck with that. And I hope you can really enjoy those assessments.